Hello there, people of the internet. I want to take a minute to talk about when guns and ammunition become obsolete. A lot of people kind of gauge obsolete to basically mean that I'm saying something is bad or will not work in a situation. Obsolete does not mean that something is bad or that it could not be pushed into service to be used in some sort of situation. For example, I have my muzzleloader right here. I'm sure we can all agree that muzzleloading rifles are obsolete. I'm sure we can all agree if somebody hiding in the woods with a muzzleloader could absolutely take somebody out. As a matter of fact, uh, I just last season I went out hunting. I took a deer with this muzzleloader, this 50 caliber muzzleloader. So it definitely does work. It goes bang, sends lead down range. Fantastic. Thumbs up. Solid thumbs up. That deer was delicious. But, that being said, that does not mean that this muzzle loader, despite the fact that it will work and could be pushed into a certain application, that does not make it not obsolete. There's a couple of different definitions for obsolete. It basically means out of date based off of the technology that is currently present or no longer being produced or used. Now, these two definitions, they come from different uh, sources, but they kind of contradict each other because as we see from the, from the second definition, we see things like the Mosin Nagant still being used all around the world today in modern conflicts, uh, like it's, it's still being used. So by the definition of the second definition, like by the second definition, the Mosin Nagant in 762x54R would not be considered obsolete because it's still in use. However, 90% of the time, whenever people are talking about whether or not something is obsolete, they are going with the first definition, talking about whether or not it is out of date or there's better technology that is currently being presented. So that is the definition that we're going to be focusing on, whether or not it's something is out of date based off of modern technology. So obviously something like a muzzle loader, as soon as cartridge technology came out, this was basically rendered obsolete. Now there's kind of some gray area as we get into more modern guns. If we look at something like a bolt action, I have this SMLE right here. This right here would also be considered obsolete, essentially by both definitions for the most part, depending on the scale it is that you want to go talking about. Like muzzle loaders, they're still making round ball and whatnot. They're just not using any in military service, which is a lot of what muzzle loaders were used for back in the day. But the SMLE, like what I have right here, this particular one has been sporterized. I'm sure someone's going to yell at me for it. But the SMLE, like what I have right here, 303 British, was used in military service for a very long time and no longer is, so no longer in use by the second definition would be considered obsolete. Uh, the Mosin Nagant, currently still being used in military service, so I guess that one would uh, not be obsolete by the second definition. And just that, that controversial uh, nomenclature is why we're not using that second definition and we're going to focus on the first. So the 303 British round from the Lee Enfield, basically all of your bolt actions would be considered obsolete in comparison to self-loading technology, uh, which came about, uh, well, basically at the advent of smokeless powder, but I know the United States did a mass issue of, of like standard issue rifles of the M1 Grand. I know the Soviets also had their self-loading rifles and the French and, and everybody had their self-loading rifles. But the United States issued the M1, the M1 Grand, uh, they adopted it in, I think, the 1930s, and they mass issued it to all of their soldiers, unlike the Russians and the Germans and whatnot, which were still using their bolt-action rifles. So in the 1930s, with the issuing of the M1 Grand to all their soldiers uh, with the United States, basically everything else that was out there that was a bolt-action by the technology that was currently being present and fielded, were considered to be obsolete. That does not mean that they did not get the job done. That just means that they were not as effective as the technology that was present. I think that we can all agree that an M1 Grand is a better firearm to use in a combat situation than something like a five-shot Arasaka or something like that. Now, there's better options and there's worse options for this obsolete technology like the SMLE what I have right here external magazines which didn't really matter back in the day but nowadays uh, external magazines you can get yourself as many mags as you want keep them loaded 10 shots 
the way that the system is designed, it has a short bolt throw. It's just a fast bolt action system to use. So it's definitely the more viable of the bolt action rifles in comparison to others that were around in the time period, but it is still obsolete by today's standards just because it is a manually operated system as opposed to modern day us having self-loading firearms. Now the 303 British, that's a rimmed cartridge. We have rimless cartridges nowadays. As a matter of fact, I would argue that the rimmed cartridge in comparison to other technology that came out whenever the 303 British was being made, was made obsolete basically immediately just because of those rimless cartridges that were available. Rimmed cartridges will still work and, they are st and they're still used today, but they're still obsolete based off of the technology that was available for the for that time period and currently is still available. So just because it's still being used does not mean that we do not have better things. But that being said, something like 303 that sent a 150 grain bullet at approximately 2,800 feet per second. So that is on par with something like 7.62 NATO. Now 7.62 NATO is a cartridge that is still used to this day. And we're going to start getting into some more modern stuff. And this is where the argument really begins. There's plenty of people out there who will say something like this right here is not obsolete because it could still be used. But in comparison to modern technology that is currently available, it definitely is more on the obsolete side. If we look at something like 7.62 NATO, that is a full power rifle cartridge. And if we're talking about using it for essentially infantry firearms, that was considered to be obsolete whenever people started going towards intermediate caliber cartridges. The 7.62 NATO essentially was considered obsolete as soon as it was made because the 8x33 Kurtz existed before that, which was a very effective intermediate cartridge that handled things at most distances that things needed handled. The reason why uh, 7.62 NATO was being adopted in your infantry firearms as opposed to just being used for like machine guns and things like that is for logistical reasons. However, modern manufacturing made things easier. Now we can very comfortably produce, uh, create, and distribute uh, both 7.62 NATO and 5.56 NATO, which is what the United States had replaced 7.62 NATO in their military service along with other countries all around the world. So 7.62 NATO, that was a cartridge that was considered obsolete with the advent of the intermediate cartridge and the wide adoption of that cartridge all throughout NATO. So now we have something like the 5.56. Well, whenever the 5.56 came out in the M16 platform that the United States was using, um, that was a very simplistic style of platform. As that platform upgraded and improved, we got the ability to use various optics. We got rail systems that allow us to mount lasers, lights, infrared, whatever it is that we need on the rifle. We allow the, the additional stuff that we put on that rifle to be able to accessorize it to our needs for whatever it is that we're going to be using for. That more modern version of that rifle made the older versions obsolete. Not to say those older versions could not still be pushed into some kind of service, I'm just saying that the modern technology and the available technology uh, that allows us to do much more, much more easily with that technology simply makes the older way of doing things an obsolete way of doing things in comparison to that modern technology. Now, if we start looking at other cartridges, as a matter of fact, let's go back to the 7.62 NATO. A lot of people will say that is not obsolete by any stretch of the imagination because it can still do a tremendous amount of things in other roles. In terms of like, let's, let's just say an infantry rifle, it would be considered obsolete, but there's a lot of other roles that other things could happen that 7.62 NATO would be a more viable cartridge than something like 5.56. Like for example, shooting at much longer ranges. Once you get to like 600 yards, 5.56 loses its effectiveness because it loses its velocity. Whereas something like 7.62 NATO, that would definitely be a much more viable option. However, we have other cartridges, I'm gonna say it and make a lot of people angry. We have other cartridges like, for example, the 6.5 Creedmoor, which are much more effective at shooting at much greater distances than 7.62 NATO. If you look at the ballistic capabilities of the two cartridges, 6.5 Creedmoor just is better at hitting things at longer range than 7.62 NATO. And that's just a fact. It has less of an arc 
and it slows down less less is it's just got better ballistics so you'll be able to more comfortably touch at long ranges with that 6.5 creedmoor and that roll right there makes the 7.62 nato obsolete it is a better technology that came out in 2008 that is just capable at doing more than the 7.62 nato so that better technology makes that older cartridge obsolete and that upsets a tremendous amount of people because they just have this emotional bias towards what a cartridge is now i'm not saying the 7.62 nato is bad i'm not saying it cannot get the job done i'm saying at 600 yards if the 7.62 nato drops this much 6.5 creedmoor drops this much so this right here, if we're shooting at long range, making shots on target, is easier to hit those shots at long range than this right here. Hopefully that is a really simplistic way to allow people to understand what it is that I am meaning. And still I will have people go in the comments and they'll yell at me because they'll say it's not obsolete because it's still being used, which is not the definition of obsolete that we're currently using, or because it could still be pushed into some sort of role, which is not the definition of obsolete that we are currently using. We are saying the technology that currently exists is better than whatever it is that we were talking about before. And so as a result, whatever we were talking about before is a less effective means to be able to do a job, whatever job it is that we're doing. Remember, these are tools. I know people have extremely hardcore uh, biases and opinions based off of their particular tools, but these are tools with certain parameters and certain things that they, that they do if 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 we take those older tools and we compare them to newer tools and the newer tools do thing better do things better then those older tools are obsolete so this is my long ranty video about what most people mean whenever they talk about obsolete but there's just a few people out there who really get upset whenever something is called obsolete because they have this extreme love towards that particular thing even though we're not calling it bad, we're not saying it cannot do a job, and we're not saying it's no longer in use. The Mosin I got 110% obsolete in comparison to modern technology. However, it is still being used. 7.62x54R, still being used. Both those horrendously obsolete. Now, there's more gray areas, like, for example, 7.62x39, which by modern standards with the modern cartridges that we currently have and the modern projectiles that we currently use, 7.62x39 is currently obsolete. There are uh, other tests and whatnot that you can see if you were to look up 7.62x39 versus 5.56, where if you use a heavier 5.56 with the right bullet, it actually does more damage on soft gel targets than 7.62x39. The Russians even swapped out their 7.62x39 for 5.45 because they deemed the 5.56 to be a better cartridge. That being said, if I'm rocking ball ammunition, I'm taking 7.62x39 every single day of the week. But 7.62x39, its limitations is about 400 yards. You can touch out past that with the cartridge, but not very effectively. There are better options for putting lead downrange more effectively at those distances than that cartridge. So as a result, that cartridge has been deemed obsolete. Just because of the technology that we have nowadays, comparing it to the technology that was around whenever that cartridge ended up coming into existence. So 7.62x39 definitely still does the job, definitely all over the place, definitely still produced, but the viability of the cartridge, the capabilities of the cartridge, although it is enough to handle like 99% of what most people are needing to handle for the role that it was pushed into, the technology we have in the other cartridges that are more modern, uh, they just outweigh that 7.62x39. Like for example, let's look at the 6.5 the 6.5 Grendel. Although not an all, although not a overly popular intermediate cartridge, it is still it, like the ballistic capabilities of that cartridge blow the 7.62x39 absolutely out of the water. Well, that's my little rant on uh, whether or not something is to be considered obsolete. I want to go ahead and touch on it. So I guess this is the end of this video. Thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below is a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you on the next episode.
I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garen. <laughs> it's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream. 